and spoke exclusively on these political challenges in the US. What happens with Brexit? What happens with uh, the Trump administration's approach to either Paris or trade agreements and so on. Um, these are the big risks that businesses face. How significant is this election coming up? Now, a coalition government as opposed to a, a majority, does that lessen the, the governability of this government? Well, it certainly makes the outcome of the Brexit negotiations even more unpredictable. I think they're pretty unpredictable at the moment, um, even with a a conservative government with a majority. Um, I think if we have some kind of coalition um, type of government going forward, it becomes even harder to work out what is going to happen. And that, of course, is going to translate into implications for businesses. Businesses say, hate uncertainty. And I think you'll see a lot of businesses, in a sense, sitting on their hands saying, we're just going to hold off a bit on investment or on the big decisions while we, while we look for a little bit of clarity as to what's going to happen. A couple years of uncertainty, possible acrimony. Do you think there will be an acrimonious negotiation with the EU? The sad truth is I think it will be quite difficult to avoid an acrimonious um, negotiation. There's an, a lot at stake, both a lot of money, but a lot of principles at stake on both sides here. And of course, on the EU side, you have to get agreement among all the other 27 members of the EU, all of whom have their own priorities and issues. It's going to be really difficult within a very short time frame. We're talking now less than two years to get agreement on all these things. Um, so I think there is a very real prospect of what people dub a hard Brexit, not really because people have aimed for it, but because getting to a compromise is more difficult than getting to a position of extremes. You've talked about the resiliency of London in light of this latest terrorism attack, but is the golden age sort of ending in the sense of the golden goose has been the banking system, but we're already hearing a number of banks moving or looking at headcount and the continent. Is London's banking edge ending? Actually, I think London, the city of London, will be one of the bits of the UK economy that will find it perhaps easiest to adapt to Brexit. Yes, there will be some thousands of jobs that will move to other parts of the EU for things like euro clearing of derivatives and things like this. But London is very much a global financial centre. I think it's much harder though if you are a small or middle-sized manufacturing business based um, in England working with parts suppliers or component suppliers in other parts of Europe, taking advantage of the fact that at the moment there is a seamless integration of supply chains across Europe. That's a much more difficult problem.